Is this a good thing for the Xfinity series, a bad thing, or do you think there are pros and cons to each side of the argument? Well, to be honest with you, Ben, I think there's pros and cons to each side of the argument. I mean, for starters, it, it, it's good to have Cup Series and Xfinity for the fact that sometimes they can help sell a sponsor for one race that can turn into a multi-race deal and, and help prolong the program moving forward. And, and, I, and I guess one of the biggest cons of the series is the obvious. We, we remember, remember in the 2000s and we had all of these Cup Series drivers running in the Xfinity race. At the time, it was called the, the NASCAR Bush Series. And, and they nicknamed those cup drivers or invaders the bush whackers because they'd always come in there and and really take the fight to the Xfinity drivers and won a huge chunk of the other of races. And as we got into the 2010s, it was the Kyle Busch show every, everywhere, running all these Xfinity races, dominating until NASCAR decided to put a limit on it, listening to the fans' feedback, frustration of seeing Kyle Busch, who's a full-time NASCAR Cup Series driver, Going out there, winning, winning a, a a large amount of NASCAR Xfinity races, and a lot of people felt like that was taken away from the regulars in the NASCAR Xfinity series because they thought they weren't getting the the the, the experience they needed. You know, like leading races, competing against one another, and with the Cup drivers blowing their doors off, they they didn't really have a chance. But on the other side, some some drivers in the Xfinity series love racing the Cup drivers because they feel like it makes them better. As a driver, I remember Austin Sendrick said that once. So if a driver is able to go door to door with Kyle Busch in the Xfinity Series and beat him, that makes them look really good for the future, especially if they're a young gun trying to get a full-time NASCAR Cup Series ride or an Xfinity driver looking to make the leap back up to the NASCAR Cup Series. So I definitely see both sides of the argument. I, I usually see both sides too, and I think it's no secret to people that follow me on social media, which side I ultimately find myself on um but i think the case of kyle bush in particular when you take a look at his resume in the xfinity series um i think it's something like 97 of his 102 wins came after he became a full-time cup series driver so if you look at it from a certain perspective here that's 97 opportunities that an xfinity series regular would have had to go out and win a an Xfinity race and and make a name for themselves. And the, the whole slogan of a series of games I've made here, it's very difficult for me to reconcile that. And I don't care if it's Kyle Busch or whoever it is. When a Cub driver steps in and takes that opportunity, takes that ride for themselves, when they've already come in and uh, and and made a name for themselves and made it to the Cup Series, I think that it's very difficult for me to to take the name of the series or the slogan of a series rather seriously. So. In, in Kyle Busch's case, I, I don't want to come off as me not appreciating what he has done in the series uh, in his career. It's it's simply incredible to win over 100 races in any national series race. But I think what he what he the, the thing with Kyle Busch is he he was really the last one that was doing this to the absolute maximum he was allowed to. We've seen the limits come in. It was 10 races. I think it started. Uh, when they put the limits on and then it became seven and now it's five. Um, you know, I think Denny Hamlin usually does Darlington every year and, and you maybe saw Keselowski or Logano do a couple of races with Penske here and there. But for the, for the most part, it's been Bush, the the main guy that we've been talking about here. It's kind of ironic that he got the name uh, Bushwhack, Bushwhacking. It came from uh, the old sponsor of the Bush series. And uh, it ends up with a guy with that exact name who uh, became most famous for doing it. So I get what the drivers say about you know, wanting to measure themselves uh, against the best of the best. But I think for the most part, you know, I, I think back to the very first Bush series race I ever watched, it was 2007 at Las Vegas. And there were uh, 26 cup regulars in the field that day, 27, if you want to throw in Regan Smith, who was part-time that year. Um, that's 26 entries in that 43 car field that could have been used by whether it's a, a series of a, a veteran trying to, uh, continue to race who who is experiencing a career revival maybe something we're seeing right now with Justin Allgaier or AJ Allmendinger or a, a young prospect trying to make a name for himself for the very first time and they can't because a cup driver is standing in their way of doing it so I think it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, fans react to this how drivers react to this and we will still have Bush in the truck series I guess for the foreseeable future um, we'll see where it goes from there. Yes, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here. I totally agree with you on the names are made here. Slogan, 
because if you have all these cup drivers in the field, names are not uh, names are definitely not not being made. You're not seeing those drivers who are expanding regulars going for the championship winning winning those races. And you mentioned those 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 night those ninety seven wins. I can't I can't help but wonder if we went back to looked at the results for all of those races, like the highest finish in the Xfinity regular, how different things would be and how different things would have turned out in the driver's career. So, so I definitely see that, 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 that side of the argument of cup drivers take, taken away. And, and one thing I've always wondered, I know five, I know the five race limit right now for cup drivers and Xfinity and trucks is very, very generous, but I wonder if in the future, if NASCAR is going to look at, you know, bad and full-time cup drivers from racing those series all together, like not even a single race. I'm wondering, Ben, do you think that's something NASCAR should look into into the future? It doesn't really seem like we're going to be seeing a lot of full-time drivers racing in Xfinity this year. Well, I'm wondering if, like I said, you know, the hope is maybe that Kyle Busch was the last guy that was doing this and uh, we might see with, with him stepping away, maybe NASCAR doesn't even have to do that because the problem takes care of itself. Um and I'll say this much to, to your other point here. I still remember, um, you know, I, I did a video on it for my channel, actually. So that's why my memory is so, is so good here. It's not like I just remember these random bush races uh, off the top of my head here. But I think it was Shane Huffman that day, and he finished in ninth place. And there, so that tells you there were eight cup drivers ahead of him in that race. So even if you take uh, Jeff Burton, won that race, Bush finished second, it was a pretty exciting finish. Um, just take those two out of the equation. You still have multiple drivers you have to go to go through to get to your first uh, series regular. So, you know, for, for fans today that complain whenever Bush wins a race or, or steps down or, or we see a cup driver pop up on an entry list, um, you know, it really wasn't that long ago. You, you don't even have to go back a full decade and uh, you recognize that it, it, it at the very least is better than it was. You know, even when the, uh, the rule came in that you had to declare which series you were going to run for uh for points you know at carl edwards i think won seven or eight races in 2011 and a lot of times i remember sitting here as a young fan thinking you know ricky stenhouse is finishing second and he's actually running for what was then at the time nationwide series points i think a lot of those races he actually finished second to carl edwards so you know i'm i'm the last guy to say that team order should be a thing but it, it was kind of ironic to me that they instituted that rule and you still had guys like carl edwards coming in and taking those wins away from from drivers like Stenhouse at the time, or uh, again, Elliot Sadler, a guy who was in cup, but was trying to re remake his career in the, what was that, the nationwide series. So again, you know, like most issues, I can understand both sides of the coin, but I, I do think that the, the cons of it far outweigh the pros. And, you know, it got particularly bad in Milwaukee later that year when you had Denny Hamlin get to the track late and Eric Almarola start the race and, yeah, that was a, I did a whole video on that one as well. That that was a, certainly a messy situation, and I think maybe it was a wake up call for a lot of people as to just how bad it got in the mid to late two thousands. But we'll see. I, I still remember that. I think Atlanta was his last start last year. He said, "You know, never say never." So we'll see if uh, if Bush gets the the itch becomes too bad, he has to scratch it again and go down there and and continue to race. So, you know, he's he's a competitor. You know, so I, I'm not convinced that we've seen the last of him, but it is. It is interesting to me that he is staying true to his word for this year, at least, and we'll see where it goes from there. And we'll see him in the truck series again as well. So who knows what's going to happen.